Hello, hello. Welcome to Rise Above with Tammy Lynn. I am Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting that good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. I am here with the word of encouragement from the Lord for you, my brothers, my sisters of Christ, to tell you to not give up. Your time has been set. Earlier today, I had came across a story of an Australian man and uh, to kind of make a long story short in my research, I basically researched the story because first of all, I wanted to make sure that it was like true. Then also in different articles and videos I was seeing on YouTube, there was different dates. So I was curious, like when did it really happen? I finally came across um, an article that gave me the specifics of what I was wanting. And I'm just going to read this and then we're going to continue letting the Holy Spirit minister. Amen. So it says, back in 1998, Australian truck driver Bill Morgan was involved in a truck accident that nearly crushed him. He miraculously, now pay attention to that word, miraculously survived the crash but suffered a heart attack as a result. He was then rushed to the emergency room and given a drug that triggered a severe allergic reaction in his body, ultimately causing his heart to stop beating. So first he's in an accident, miraculously sur survives but then has a heart attack from it, goes to the ER, has a situation there that causes his heart to stop beating. Bill Morgan had died, okay, dead. Y'all with me, stay with me here. The Holy Spirit is gonna speak to some of you. He died, but in an amazing twist of faith that wasn't, that wasn't the end of him. Now this article doesn't talk about it, God at all, but like, okay, I'm not sorry. He is the God of all flesh. They call it fate. I'm calling it the hand of God. I don't know if to this day Bill Morgan has realized who God is and that it was his power, that it was even his saving grace that kept him in the first place. And second of all, that it was his power um, that raised him back from the dead because God had a purpose for him. But anyway, so we're seeing a word miraculously here. We're seeing an amazing twist. Okay. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling the Holy Spirit on this. And it says, after being clinically dead for more than 14 minutes, and 14 is a significant number, okay? It's the number of God, for those of you who God speaks to in numbers. Anyways, Bill was revived, but remained comatose. He was in a vegetative state for more than a week, and doctors advised his family to take him off life support. It's a good thing they didn't, though. Bill's first miracle. Well, this is his first miracle. I'm thinking the first one goes back to because it says miraculously survived. But anyways, miraculously, here we are again, twice, miraculously, after 12 days, 12 again. Now, that is the number of God. Bill woke up and eventually made a complete recovery, okay? There's that word recovery. The Lord has been saying, you are going to recover all. This is a recover all season. Glory, hallelujah. He also gave me a prophetic word that I released recently called Miraculous Recoveries. I am telling you people of God, I don't know what your battle has been. I don't know what promise of God you have been waiting on, but this is your season. This is your set time. Glory, hallelujah. This is like you're an appointed time. Come on, Holy Spirit. This is like your Kairos moment. Like it is here, people of God. And the Lord will decree a word such as this, when a word like this is a now word, he decrees it, and you are about to see the manifestation, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh man, I'm getting excited, I wasn't planning on this kind of excitement, um, but God is good, um, so let me find out where I'm at, okay, so recovery, because that, that got me there, and I just, the Holy Spirit really jumped on that one, he didn't jump on it earlier, I didn't see it, but he just did, I love how he works, anyways, he was very fortunate to have walked away from the ordeal without any serious health problems. With a new lease on life, Bill was optimistic about the future, okay? Many of y'all, you are about to get a new lease on life. You are about to have a new beginning. You are about to have a divine reset. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Man, I love how he ministers. Like, I'm getting touched just talking about it. Hallelujah. Okay, so he eventually got a new job and mustered up the courage to propose to his girlfriend, um, she happily accepted. Um, sometime after his engagement, Bill Morgan decided to try his luck 
at the lottery. Man, this article is giving no glory to God, <laughs> but as a woman of God, I give all glory to God. Nothing happens by coincidence, okay? And if this guy isn't even taught in any of his videos, like, I don't even call him saying anything about God. So if this kind of stuff, this miraculous recovery, miraculous survival, being coma 12 days, all this stuff, this is going to happen to someone who's not even acknowledging God. Hello, people of God. How much more is going to happen for you? Because you acknowledge the Lord your God. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so excited for y'all. Okay, so check this out. So he buys the lottery ticket. It's a scratch off. And instantly won a car worth about $17,000 at the time. Bill was expectedly overjoyed. Mm -mm. So he was expectedly overjoyed. Okay, well, yeah, they're like, of course you're going to be overjoyed. What is getting ready to manifest in your life? It will be unexpected is what I feel in my spirit. It is, and I released another word, like the Holy Spirit is very consistent when, I mean, and I know that I know that it is a word for his people and you will hear me continually decreeing the same words, but it is just going to be that the tears are too good to be true. <laughs> kind of like if you read the story of Peter when he showed up at the door with all the people uh, praying and, and knocked at the door and Rhoda heard his voice. Like <laughs> she was in such a shock, you know, couldn't even believe that Peter was there because, you know, after all, he was in prison, chained down, locked up, you know, and ready to uh, be persecuted. And, um, you know, she ran off to tell everybody else because she's like, you know, Peter's at the door. You know, and then they're thinking, you're, you're crazy. Uh, but she wasn't crazy. And then whenever they went open the door, I mean, they were all shocked with the too good to be true. Glory, hallelujah. And it was unexpected. It was an unexpected knock at the door. Glory, hallelujah. Okay, so let's keep going. Oh, y'all see, I get so excited. So this, this lucky turn of events, again, I don't believe in luck. I don't do that kind of stuff. Event soon caught the interest of a Melbourne news station. They decided to cover Bill's story, and this is where things get really interesting. Okay, I'm getting somewhere with all this, and I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm about to stop. Um, while filming a reenactment of his win, Bill purchased another scratch-off ticket that would prove to be his biggest surprise yet. He had just won $250,000 right on live television. I want to stop right there like with that. What is the Lord saying? recompense double for your trouble i don't know who this is for but this is for someone and you've gone through some stuff the battle has been real the enemy doesn't like you but it is almost payday time it is like your set time glory hallelujah i'm just so excited i'm so excited for you my brothers and sisters to christ so what is the lord saying again miraculous recoveries you are about to have a miraculous recovery you are about to recover all and there will be nothing missing <laughs> and it will be unexpected and it will bring you tears of too good to be true why because <laughs> the wait is over you did not see it coming glory hallelujah i want to share one more thing with you guys hold on sorry um okay so this is another way the lord has spoke to me um and how i know that he is saying don't give up now, when I made a crossover from Oklahoma to Florida back in, at the end of December of 2021, um, I had brought with me this very precious little palm tree that my uh, one of my sisters had given me. Um, I don't know what kind of palm it was. Um, and even a guy the other day told me, and I still even forgot. I just know I love the palm tree, and it really always spoke to me. And every time I'd see this, look at this palm tree, I would think of Psalms 90, uh, 90 what, what is that? I can't believe I forgot it. Uh, 9212, but the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. I literally cannot believe I just forgot that scripture. It is one of my favorite, but hey, okay. Anyways, um, I'll post it in the bottom, but I would look at this and that's what I would think of because the Lord really speaks to me through palm trees and there's a whole nother meaning through that. And even Tammy in the Hebrew means palm tree. And you know, and Deborah, she had her ministry under the palm trees and now I'm in Florida, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this palm tree took a little um beating in the tr in the crossover um but i still had hope for it well i thought when god brought me from oklahoma that i was delivered from the cold weather i did not know the area that i was in i was still going to be needing some winter items so i had this palm tree out on my patio um because even for like the longest time for about two years that i had had it like i knew that i was going to be going to florida and so I would even see this palm tree and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, well, just how exciting because, you know, it's going to end up in a place that, you know, God had been calling me to since like 2011. But anyway, so I left it outside 
because like I'm thinking I don't I literally don't know much about Florida at all definitely not that it could get really cold at times here so I left it out on the patio because I'm thinking it, it's impossible to get that cold in Florida to where like your plant is going to die well um I don't know if that was being in faith or being foolish but um it died like the leaves just died on it and so one day I'm just looking at this palm tree and I finally got to the point that I guess just it's time to give up <laughs> like just you know put it in the trash you know save the pot and you know throw the sticks that are left away on it and I felt the Lord just tell me to hold on and to watch what he does so okay I recognize his voice so I leave this thing that is like it's dead it looks dead as dead as can get like it looks like ain't nothing going to come from this whatsoever so early in April, I was sitting on my patio one morning and I looked down and I see this little green kind of sprouting up, sprouting up, ever how you want to call it. And I look at it and I'm like, surely not. And I get up and I go look at it and I'm still like, surely not, because that thing was dead. And um, every day it's like it just kept growing. So finally, a few days ago, I took some pictures of this and I went down to a local uh, plant warehouse because I'm, I'm about to find out what's up with this thing because I'm kind of thinking like God is speaking to me. So I took a picture. I'm really hoping y'all can kind of see it. Let me see if I get it on this side. Maybe it's a better view. Okay, but you can see like the, the top of it. Like it is just dead. And down here at the bottom, you can now see the green. Well, I took it to the, see that down there? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I took it to this plant, a warehouse, and I asked the guys, like, hey, do you know what kind of palm tree this is? And he said it immediately. I'm just really bad with names. I'm not a materialistic person. I'm not a name brand person. It's either it's cute or it's not. That's how I see it. So anyways, palm tree is cute. I like it. It's a palm tree, and um, it was special to me, and I just wanted to keep it forever and ever. And um, so obviously I was sad and, like, mourned the fact that because I thought this thing was dead, and it was time to just get over it. But anyway, so he told me, and I was like, so what is that at the bottom? He goes, it's growing a new tree. And I'm like, you're kidding me. I felt like a child at Christmas. So he told me what to do. I came home. I cut it down, you know, as low as I can. Um, he told me to cut it to where I saw some greens. Some of you who do plants, you know, yay for you. I'm not, I mean, I, I'm not really good with plants. So I really need things that do well on thriving on their own. Um, and so, yes, a new tree is um coming forth out of this and the lord spoke something to me and this is what he spoke he said never give up it is i who brings dead things back to life it is i who has the final say in all matters nothing is impossible with me there is a time for mourning but i also set the times of joy overflowing enjoy your new beginnings hallelujah and another thing that he had showed me and why the article had used the word expectedly, um, unexpectedly came to me because what he showed me is I was looking at the top of the tree where the old branches were and that had um, died and fallen off. I was looking for new life there. I was looking for growth there. And it actually came up from the bottom out of nowhere unexpectedly. So what is the Holy Spirit saying? miraculous recoveries, unexpected places in an unexpected way, but he will do it because he brings dead things back to life. And because of what you went through, you are going to get double for your trouble. He is going to bring with him in this recovery recompense to you. Glory. Hallelujah. God is so good. I'm so happy for y'all. Okay. So right when I was writing down what he had said to me, cause I had written it down on a Facebook post that I had shared. Um, so I went back in there because like that was what he wrote or gave me. So I wanted to read it again, word for word. And, um, when I was writing it out again, the word set came to me. And so I just started researching set. And as I was researching that and then going to set time, and um this was, i just felt like he was trying to show me something and in all of my research on it that is when i knew that he was speaking it is your appointed time 
It is the appointed time for the manifestation of the promise. It is the appointed time of the miraculous recovery. It is the appointed time for the recompense. It is your Kairos moment. Glory, hallelujah. And then he took me to Psalms 102, 13. Yeah, 102, 13. And I'm going to read this out of the Passions Translation. He says, it says, I know you are about to arise and show your tender love to Zion. Now is the time, Lord, for your compassion and mercy to be poured out. Some other translation says, for your gracious, for your grace to be poured out, for your favor to be poured out upon her. And then it says, the appointed time has come for your prophetic promises to be fulfilled. Glory, hallelujah. People of God, you stood. You stood in the midst of it all. You pushed through the pain. You pushed through in prayer and faith. You knew that you heard the Lord. And now the Lord is going to prove to you that you who placed your hope in him, you who placed your confidence in him, will not be disappointed. Glory, hallelujah. People of God, enjoy your appointed time. Enjoy your Kairos moment. Enjoy your new beginning. Glory, hallelujah. Now go forth, arise, and testify of the goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord our God. People of God, continue to rise above. Continue to stay in faith. Continue to stay strong and courageous. Continue to hope against all hope. And until next time, shalom.